You are listening to the Charles Carroll Society Podcast, episode 03-2018. I'm your host, the self-appointed bard of the American Readout. Today we're going to update you on the federal political situation as it impacts modern-day anti-federalists who are libertarian-leaning conservatives, i.e. patriots. This will include covering DACA, what we can expect from the upcoming 2018 election, and local American readout federal races. So let's get started. This is a war, and this is your fate. We are the face of your new police state. We are the law, and we've got the guns. Statutory power, mandatory minimum. Hey everybody, Alex Barron here. Welcome to the Charles Carroll Society podcast. If this is your first time listening, thanks for stopping by. We provide political commentary as well as stories from my pers- my family's personal journey from suburbia uh, to a more self-sufficient rural lifestyle deep in the American readout. The Charles Carroll Society podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at charlescarrollsociety.com. Please come back often and feel free to subscribe and share the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Blueberry, TuneIn, or SoundCloud. You can also follow me at Mr. Alex Barron on Twitter or on Minds at Mr. Alex Barron. You can email me directly at alex at alexanderbarron.com. Please put CCS in the subject line so I can separate it from the spam. All links are in the show notes on the blog, so let's get right into the show. The DACA deal. The DACA deal, in a word, is, a, is the death for the limited government movement in the United States. What DACA allegedly does is it legalizes, actually makes citizens of immigrants who allegedly were brought here as children, uh, they claim through no fault of their own. So if a family moved to the United States, mom, dad, and three kids, the DACA deal would illegally, they jumped the wall, came over on boats or whatever they did, the DACA deal would then take these illegal aliens. They're no illegal humans, but they are illegal aliens. An illegal alien is someone who is resident in the nation and who didn't follow the laws of the nation to come here. Illegal alien. That's what it is. Um, they would take these illegal alien children and give them a path, a quote unquote pathway to citizenship. Why is this the death nail? Well, the reason that Democrats and progressives push so hard for the DACA deal is that all American citizens have the constitutional right or legal right to sponsor other people to become American citizens. So you are an American citizen. If you marry a girl from Thailand or from Russia or from Ukraine, you have the legal right to say, I'd like my wife to become an American citizen. That's your right. By making these children citizens, the right is not only wife, it's immediate family. All of these children will then immediately sponsor their parents to become American citizens. So one quote unquote guaranteed way to become an American citizen is jump the fence with your children. DACA will let your children become American citizens. When they become American citizens, they can turn around and immediately sponsor you to become an American citizen. Thus, whatever numbers they talk about for DACA, for people who are in the know, you have to take those numbers and multiply them by at least four. You know, this kid is going to sponsor his wife from his home nation and his parents, you know, or whatever. So we're not talking about a million. We're talking about whatever he has a legal right to sponsor. And if he becomes American citizen, he's no longer even an immigrant. He's an American citizen. He has a United States passport. He has a certificate of citizenship. That's it. He's just like you and me. He, he, he just disappears in the mix. So any r- requirement that says he can't sponsor someone is going to have to really be written well because you have the right to sponsor whoever you like. Now, why, you know, by the way, the overwhelming majority of the people who legally come here uh, to the United States, they come from Mexico. Mexico is our dysfunctional, extremely poor neighbor on our southern border. So uh, although that many other countries uh, send their poor uh, here or their poor come here looking for a better way of life, the majority are obviously the people who live on the border or live uh, south of us and they can get to here easily. So why is it that in the majority are Mexican? So why is it that 
simply by having a lot more Mexicans, this will end the conservative limited government movement? Is it race based uh, like the white nationalists from the alt right uh, claim? Um, no, it's literally performance. Seventy uh, percent of Mexicans vote for the most communist option in their home country of Mexico. In Mexico, uh, there are two main parties. One is called PRI and the other one is PRD, uh, I believe. I always focus on the PRI. No, PAN, P-A-N, sorry. PRD is a party, but it's a minor. It's even an even more socialist party. So PAN, P-A-N. Well, the PRI stands for the Permanent Revolutionary Institute Party. It literally is the communist party. When the communists took over and got rid of the Spanish and stole all the Catholic Church land, they instituted their permanent revolutionary party, PRI. That party has won the overwhelming majority of elections in Mexico for a 100 years. Why is Mexico a basket case? Because it is a socialist, communist-run government. That's why. That is why. Communists and socialists have held power in Mexico for the vast majority of time over the last century. That's what Democrats want. They know this. And that has nothing to do with immigration. It has nothing to do with racism. That's in their own home nation. 70% of Mexicans vote for the most communist option available. Another sad thing for the Catholics who are listening, as everyone knows, I'm a traditional Catholic, but I believe the only way to solve problems is to freely admit that you have one first is that in too many countries, when there is a Catholic majority, like in Mexico, people tend to vote for the most authoritarian option available. And that's not just only socialists and communists. People tend to vote for very authoritarian regimes. There's a very, it's even, perhaps even in the Orthodox faith. The Orthodox faith also seems to generate voters who vote and support authoritarian regimes. We take our uh, our comfort level with authority and our faith, and we then apply it to the civil space. And I don't believe that has turned out very well for us. I truly do not. So uh, that's something else to think about. I don't obviously uh, discourage Catholics coming here, but in America, we I believe that for the Catholic faith and all religious faith and all religious people and all people, even on the state level, to be safer, we must have a more limited government, i.e. a more I'm libertarian leaning. I want to limit the government. Uh, it seems that Trump uh, does not understand that to get a DACA deal is to lose the republic. Um, he seems to want to trade some future annihilation of the republic for a deal to build the wall now. The wall is a very important symbol. It's a very important thing, but um, it's not going to solve the problem all by itself. And legalizing, you know, one million DACA children who are going to then uh, sponsor four or five more million uh, Mexicans, 70% of them when they turn uh, adult will then vote for the most socialist option, i.e., you know, Bernie Sanders, socialism, socialist Democrats, or maybe Democratic Party is a death nail. It's a death nail for limited government. It's a death nail for gun rights. It's a death nail. That's just the way it comes out. I always say that if Mexicans voted like uh, Cuba, Cubanos, Cubans who tend to vote against socialism and communism of every stripe, then people would be sitting there trying to, you know, be an underground railroad of people trying to get them in the country because they vote very well. With that being said, um, the simple fact of it is, is that President Trump and Stephen Miller are the only things keeping the, the Republican lobbyists from selling us all out. The Republican lobbyists and the Republican Party goes along with it, want cheap labor. They want people to do your job cheaper than you're willing to do it and cheaper than your children are willing to do it. Democrats want the globalist socialist votes. And if we didn't have someone up like Steve Millen, Steve Miller and President Trump, we would be gone. So we are trying to let the Republicans, the Republicans seem not to care as long as they get to live in their pretty much all white uh, areas and send their kids to private all white schools, then they don't really care that the rest of us are living. America's being turned into a third world hellhole. Okay. They don't care. So that's what doc is. What can we do? We can try to help president Trump see the light and he and Steve Miller to get the absolute best deal. For example, don't let any of these people become citizens until the wall is complete. Do not let chain migration take away their ability. And I don't know how you do it for them to sponsor anyone. Okay. 
I personally believe that DACA should end up with not not a pathway to citizenship, but that's a red line in the sand for the Democrats because the Democrats want the voters. If the Democrats aren't getting the voters, they don't want the Republicans to get the cheap labor. So you'll see the Democrats are like, if you don't give them a pathway to citizenship, i.e. let them vote for us to keep us in office, we're not going to give you, the Republicans, the cheap labor. Screw Americans. We need to turn this country into a third world hellhole. Everyone has a right to come here, and that's just the way that they take it. So we have to fight against that any way we can. What can we expect from the past perform, uh, from the 2018 election? Past performance says that the Republicans should lose a lot of power in 2018. They should lose seats at the local, state, and national level. Um, from my analysis, the president's party generally loses around, loses ground in midterm elections. In midterm since 1862, per my research, Whatever party has the White House has averaged losses of 32 seats in the House and more than two seats in the Senate. Only in the years of 1934 and 2002 are the only years which I know that the president's party um, has gained seats in both chambers. Thus, the president's party historically has just gotten stomped in midterm elections, period. So that's the facts, Jack. Now, can I tell you what's going to happen? No, I cannot. But, you know. No, we all know that no plan ever survives contact with the enemy, yet only an idiot goes into battle without a plan. So the concept is we have to be prepared for uh, the Republicans to lose a huge amount of seats. OK, and if that's true, uh, we need to uh, we need to plan on that. We need to take a look at that and think about what pe- what guns people will be buying in December this year if what I just said comes to be. So if you have the money, make sure you buy it now. Ruger is is facing bankruptcy because so few people are buying guns right now. The price of firearms have dropped. The price of, price of bullets have dropped. The price of, of long-term storage foods have dropped. Um, currently, there's land still over here in Wyoming and Montana and Idaho uh, that you can afford. So when everyone else zigs, the stock market's up, your 401k's up, everything's up, zag. You take that and figure out how you can take a look at it. I can't tell you what's going to happen, but historically, the president's party has been stomped. And if the Republicans lose two seats in the, in the Senate, the Senate flips to Democratic control. If the House members lose 32 seats, the House flips to Democratic control. So if the average happens historically, then uh, the Republicans are in a lot of problems. With that being said, we only have one big seat here in the American readout, obviously Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, and of course, the eastern parts of Washington and Oregon. And that is the one big seat for the Senate is um, incumbent Democrat John Tester. John Tester is a extremely liberal Democrat. He has he's very weak on guns. He's very pro abortion. He voted to shut down the government. In other words, saying I will shut down the government if you don't give these DACA recipients a citizenship right now, right now. And um, so he's terrible. Uh, John Tester has voted for both of Obama's Supreme Court nominees, Sonia Sotomayor and Ellen Kagan. And he has voted for President Obama's gun control measures. He has literally voted to disarm American citizens, flood the country, open up the borders, disarm the local citizenship. He wants Montana to be more like California. Um, Montana is considered a moderately Republican state. Yet um, uh, we need to, as all, all of us who are conservatives, who are who are politically migrating to Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, we need to push those these states more to a libertarian-leaning conservative government. If the Democrats lose the seat in Montana, I wonder if they're going to be able to hold the Senate. I truly do, because they need to hold all their seats and pick up several. Um, I wonder if they can, if it becomes much harder if John Tester is beaten. So we in the American Readout, once again, um, can help out the entire nation. But I worry. I worry um, that too many voters in Montana uh, care much more about, you know, their local welfare, what they can do for us, the local issues, more than seeing, you know, this issue as impacting Christian conservatives all over the nation. Too many voters care about what John Tester can deliver to them instead of th- thinking about what John Tester is going to do to the rest of us. John Tester votes to slaughter the innocent. John Tester votes to disarm Americans. John Tester is well financed by the Democratic Party because they know they have to hold that seat. He has literally, I believe at the last time I took a look, he has nearly $6 million, over $6 million in his war chest to win a re-election. One of the primary Republican contenders of of John Tester is a guy named Matt Rosendale. 
Matt Rosendale has received many, many endorsements from strong conservatives. Um, for example, liberty um, leaning conservatives such as Senators Mike Lee and Ted Cruz. He's obviously received the endorsement of the NRA, but even more importantly, the Gun Owners of America, which is much more uh, hardcore in pushing our and defending our rights to the Second Amendment. So if you live in uh, Montana, uh, please take a look at um, the voting records of uh, Matt Rosendale and see what you can do to help him get elected for the good of all of us. So thank you very much for tuning in to the Charles Carroll Society podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please share and like it on iTunes and Stitcher. Please subscribe to the blog and share uh, the, the podcast and blog among your families and friends. If you want Western civilization, Christianity, and liberty, individual liberty to survive, you are personally responsible with finding some way to demonstrate your own non-compliance to this post-Christian system. Every week, try to perform some small action of protest some small action of self-reliance and non-compliance. Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, either Virgin of Guadalupe.